One extra hour of study each day and you'll be a national expert in your field in five years or less. Now when I heard that, remember I was a government clerk. So I'm sitting there thinking, an hour a day. I got eight hours a day. I could do this by Thursday. And then I had a new dilemma. What am I going to be an expert at? Well, it wasn't going to be urban renewal. <laughs> and the more I thought about it, the less that appealed to me. And then finally it hit me. I want to do what the guy on the radio is doing. But I had two prob or two conditions, that is, that would inhibit one speaking career. One, I had never given a speech. <laughs> two, I had nothing to say. <laughs> That'll hold your fees down, right? Well... So I thought about what Nightingale had said. Okay, an hour a day extra studying this field. In five years or less, I'm a national expert. Heck, if he's telling the truth, I got it nailed. So I started overcompensating. Two hours, three hours. You remember Jim, right? My son, Jim Jr. He remembers, Paula remembers enduring this. I was a fanatic about personal growth. Reading books, listening to tapes, getting records, you know, going to seminars, anything I could do. Sure enough, within five years, I was working full-time as a trainer, leading courses that other people had designed. Within a year or two after that, I was authoring my own courses. And ever since then, I've been flying around the world and giving speeches, and I've had the privilege of being president of the National Speakers Association and the greatest privilege a speaker can receive, the Golden Gavel Award. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. All of this began with one inspiring message on the radio. One little inspiring message in one random broadcast that day, at least to me it was random. And I just happened to hear those words at the time I needed them, and it gave me the tools with, it, with which I could change my life. Boy, we have a privilege on this platform, as my friend Naomi Rody would say. What a privilege and what a responsibility because people take us seriously. When you stand before a group and you deliver with conviction a message, people take it as truth. So we have a huge responsibility to make that a message that uplifts rather than tears down. A message that inspires rather than discourages or plants seeds of doubt. Boy, what a privilege we have.